So who are you and what do you do? Um, my name is Betsy Plumley, and I am an HR business partner for Nimicool and Woodlands Resort. And tell us, how did you get into HR? What did that journey look like? Um, so getting into HR uh, can typically be something that's a, a little bit daunting and challenging right out of school. Um, I, I will say that some of the entry level positions coming straight out of school are pivotal um, when, when you're trying to uh, first get into the industry. I personally took a position um, getting familiar with uh, a staffing agency uh, called Manpower. And um, I learned a lot of the basic fundamentals for recruitment and onboarding there. Aren't they, is there headquarters in San Diego? I could be wrong. Um, so but. for the franchise of Manpower, I believe so, actually. Um, so, I mean, there there is a uh, national division. Um, I personally worked for a privately owned division. So things were a little bit different. Um, while they still held the same values and mission and motto, um, there, there was some, a few minute differences. So... Very interesting. And then, you know, how were you referred into getting your first job? How did that transition occur? You know, was it just luck or was it work? You know, walk us through that. Um, so a, a little bit of both, um, I, I choose to believe. So for this particular position, when I originally started out, um, I had actually relocated to a completely new area. I was about, um, four hours North of where I grew up. So like my network of people and, in um, everyone I knew was very, very small. So, um, I actually, one of the first things that I started doing was getting on LinkedIn, um, so making some of those professional connections and, and trying to be introduced to people was uh, extremely important, uh, trying to get into the industry. And then um, and it's one of those things like when, when you're trying to get your foot in the door and especially in entry level positions, um, you really do have to make sure that you're very vigilant about following up and uh, showing interest in the position and uh, just, just bringing everything to the table you can. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, it's like you have to prove yourself as a resource, you know? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And, the, and, that's, and that's the other part of it that is so very difficult getting um, into the industry or, or getting your first job into HR is proving you are a resource because you have the same degree that everybody else has. So what is it that's going to make you stand out? Um, and I will say that depending on the area that you're in, depending on the industry you work in, um, you really do have to not be afraid to let your personality shine um, because HR is a, is a lot of laws and it is a lot of um, policies and procedures and, and things that are all the same no matter where you go. But at the same time, you need the right person to convey that for the right culture and the right environment. Um, so being able to relate your attributes into being in one of those positions and being a huge asset is, is really important to be able to shine through in an interview. And, you know, as you're going through this process of getting your first job in HR and then continued growth, what are some tangible steps that you've taken to ensure that that growth kept continuing? Um, I, I would say without a doubt, especially with HR growing the way that it is, um, you, you're seeing more and more titles and you're seeing more and more positions that, that weren't all that familiar. Um, and something that is, is really um, important for us um, in this particular area is you have a lot of people who are getting certifications and the certifications are what is setting people apart. So you have to have your degree. Absolutely. Without fail, you're going to have to have your, a four-year degree to do that. A master's degree is great. And if you get a certification on top of that, then like you immediately move to the top tier of positions when you're applying. Um, in this particular area, of course, they're looking for like a PHR or your SHRM certification. Um, I personally just finished my human resources management certification through my master's program. Um, you're starting to see an uptick in a lot of like the project management certifications like Lean Six Sigma, um, the PMP certification. Um, while those are a little bit costly to take the tests um, and some of them are even a little bit costly to renew and, and maintain, um, they definitely play a big part in, in setting people apart in the HR universe. So. And we have certifications, which often teach like 
a lot of theory and important concepts with HR. And then we have the, the more practical aspect, which is applying, you know, now what you learn and it comes down to, you know, what we call skills and what helps develops all these different skills. So what are some of the important skills that have really helped you in your HR career? Um, so there's a lot <laughs> and, and, I, and I truly do think that it kind of depends on the aspect of, of HR that you're trying to, to move into because of course um, HR encompasses so much in between like talent acquisitions, benefits, um, employee relations, onboarding, um, the HRIS systems. I mean, so, so there's so many different intricacies when it comes to HR. Um, but have it like you're talking about those skills, finding somebody who's very well-rounded in all of those things is, is rare. Um, a lot of times you, you start to see that influx in people who come from like smaller companies, there might've been one or two HR people. So they did everything. Um, one of the things that I found was extremely useful um, for me in my HR career was, um, being familiar with unions. So it's, it's something that we all talk about, uh, when you go through your programs in your working on your degree and, and you start getting into grievances and mediations and arbitrations and and everything starts to like get really foggy <laughs> because there's a lot that you have to pay attention to but um there are still a lot of uh industries who who do have very active unions and for somebody to have that particular set of skills and to know exactly what they're getting into um is honestly, it's, it's irreplaceable because that's just it. Like a, a union could form within a couple of weeks in a business. Um, so it, it's something that if you have 15 HR people who've been working in the same uh, business in the same industry for all of these years and nobody's ever worked in a union, and now all of a sudden we have one, um, it can be challenging. It can be very challenging because it's a lot of information to uh, be able to decipher through. Yeah, I think that's so important. What you said is, I think a big part of it is also just willing to expand your knowledge and other verticals that may appear. So some of the people that I've talked to that have had a lot of success in HR were working in finance before they yeah. started their career in HR because they're working with HR professionals from a finance standpoint. And they're like, Hey, I'd really like to try HR. Mm -hmm. And then they have this more of an ecosystem knowledge of the business and how Absolutely. things like, you know, such as you're saying, like unions, whatever it may be, all these other variables can appear and they just have a good perspective of it. Absolutely. And like, and even for me, like I came from a sales background is actually what I was doing as I was trying to get into the industry. I had already graduated, was looking to take those first steps. Um, and, and it's a very difficult transition because whatever you were working in before you were working with, um, you might have uh, a, a lot of times like you're making a certain amount of money and this is what you're expecting. And in order to get into the industry, you might have to take a little bit of a pay cut in order to do that. Um, to, to build yourself back to where you want to be in the industry. I personally came from sales, so I was used to a commission-based lifestyle. So my my entire life could go from eighty thousand dollars a year to thirty thousand. So it's one of those things that um, even at that, it's having those skills like in coming from sales, it, it made me very, very natural for talent acquisitions and recruitment, just because you're selling a job, you're selling this place to work. I want you to come work for me. And these are all the things that we offer. And I'm selling this to you out of everybody who's offering you a job. I want you to work for me. So, um, there are so many things that, that we do throughout our life and, and those skills that we do pick up that can be transferable to HR. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> Now, you know, as you made this transition to HR, and you also have a sales background. So understanding a lot of the recruiting process, I'm sure there's different tools that you're working with. Can you talk about some of your favorite tools that help you on maybe a weekly basis or a day to day basis that really help improve your workflow? Sure, absolutely. So right now, a lot of what I focus on is I do a lot of exempt recruitment. Um, I, I do handle a, a cluster of hourly positions just because I've done it for so long. It's one of those things that's kind of hard to let go. Um, but I do a lot of exempt level recruitment. So um, managers, directors, VPs, stuff like that. And then um, the other really heavy focus for my position is employee relations. Um, so uh, you... <laughs> 
and, and with HR, you have a, every day is different. Um, whatever's walking through your door is going to be completely different than what happened yesterday. Um, one of the huge benefits that I found is the SHRM website. So if you, you actually pay to become a member, um, you have access to their website and you can type in whatever is going on, whether it could be something from an FMLA question or a uh, COVID question in, in particular right now that they have an entire workshop on there that you can go through and uh, they can help you break down like what we should be doing. And then um, I even had went to this website once because I had an issue with um, an employee. Um, I was having reports of like body odor and it was something that was becoming a hindrance to the, the work experience and everybody around them. So I'm saying, I have no idea how to handle this, you know? So, I mean, this is, this is not one of those chapters that you got when you were in college. So um, SHRM has been a huge asset um, in, in letting you know exactly how to phrase things, you know, and exactly how to word things and, and to make sure that you're being empathetic and you're being sincere and you're addressing the root cause of the, of the issues that you're having. Um, um, so I'm a big fan of the SHRM website. It's, it's helped me out a lot um, going forward. And, and then, of course, you have an entire network of people. So anytime that you can become a member or, or become a network of something that's HR related is so important just because, again, every day is different. Somebody else might have dealt with a problem that you've never had to deal with. Um, in working in different industries, I worked in healthcare for a very long time. Um, the standards and everything that we work through in healthcare were completely different than working where I do now in hospitality. So um, being able to tap into a network of other people who work in similar fields or worked in the same type of situation is so very helpful. And you know, it seems like you really like where you are right now in HR and you've gone through this incredible journey. So there's probably some understanding you have of what goes into picking an HR job that you'll enjoy. So tell us about that. Um, <clears throat> yes. <laughs> um, so when, and, and truly, I think it's, it's, uh, circumstantial for each individual person, kind of like we were talking about, like, there's so many different facets to HR, and you really have to, like, as you start your HR journey, you have to figure out where it is that you want to be. Did you fall in love with HR because of the benefits side of things, because of, um, like, the 401k and retirement and pension plans? Did you fall in love with it because of, because of unions, because of recruitment? Like, what exactly is your focus? Um, so, like, when, when you're looking for a job, like, those keywords are a very, important because working in talent acquisitions, the bigger the company is, like talent acquisitions is usually completely separate from HR. While you're still under the same umbrella, it's still viewed completely differently. Um, and I think it's very important to, to keep in mind of the culture of, of where you're wanting to work and where you're wanting to interview and what you're looking for. Um, working for a private company versus working for a publicly traded company is completely different. Um, how they can run their businesses are completely different. So your HR is completely different. So um, you really have to figure out where your balance is and, and what you're happy with. Like I said, the culture of a work environment is super important. Do you, do you like the close-knit? Do you like the family type of setting? I've worked in HR departments where there was two of us, and then right now there's 15 of us. So, I mean, working in a completely different dynamic because the size of the group and then what we do, um, it, it's, it's being able to find your, your perfect balance, definitely, and, and being able to say, I want to work for a smaller company because I like working with a smaller, close-knit group of people and knowing that you're going to have a larger scale HR job. You might be doing recruitment, onboarding, and you might be doing benefits, or I want to work for a very large company and all I want to focus on is recruitment. So um, I think those are very important questions to ask like before you get into the industry and you uh, take a dive in. Like Personally, for me, um, one of the things I'm not uh, good at at all is compensation analytics um, and it always falls under HR just because we do market analysis all the time for jobs as, as they grow and things change and I'm sitting here and I'm like that's a lot of numbers um, so it's, it's one of those things like it's not my strong suit so something that would be geared toward like just a, a comp analytics set would not be successful for me in my HR career. So just keeping those things in mind and knowing who I am personally and in the type of setting I, I like to work in, those are very important as you're, as you're moving forward in your HR career. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think part of it is just 
going in and testing these things out because often you don't know what you don't know. And you're like, Hey, this may be for me. Um, but also just being willing to, to be conscious of whether you like it or not and ask yourself those tough questions and say, okay, now that I got this job, is this where I want to be? Do I want to be in a smaller company like you were saying, or is this a better fit? Because you don't have to be anywhere forever. Um, so ask yourself those questions so you can you know move into the job that you want. The hard part is that does come with time and more experience. Um, and I think that's why you know, people like yourself and other people who are able to be in the industry for a number of years end up becoming happier because they self-identify with things within the industry that they like. And they're like, okay, this is the part that I like. I've tried out these other things that didn't fit me, but this one, okay, there we go. Absolutely. And it is, it's, it's about trial and error just because like, you don't know, like coming straight out of school until you hit that very first job. And then they're giving you all these tasks and you're learning things and you're applying the knowledge that you had while you were in school or the certification you might've just gotten. You don't know yet, like until you do it and you put those um, skills to work, you're sitting here going, Oh, I don't, I don't like that. Um, and so it is, it's, it's very interesting. Like for, and for me personally, like I, I've gone through that myself. Um, I have been, I, I've worked in a lot of facilities that have had union experience and union exposure. And it was one of those things that it took me a very long time to wrap my head around just because I had non-union employees who basically were set off by a completely different set of rules. So, I mean, you had different guidelines and different policies and everything so that these employees adhere to versus these employees, but you still work for the same place. And I'm saying, how does this work? <laughs> um, so, I mean, it's, it's just finding all of those little bitty things that they truly do make a difference. Um, and, and for me, like I said, I mean, it was real natural for me to fall into talent acquisitions just because of my personality and my background. Um, and I, still to this day like I have a hard time not recruiting even when like that's not my primary focus of my job I go I'll run into somebody in Walmart and I go oh are you looking for a job um because we're <laughs> talking about it in line and it's just one of those things it's, it's hard to let go and you know next question here is a little bit more broad um but everybody has a unique experience in how they get into HR and where their background is so they all have great perspectives they're all a little bit different on where the future of HR is going and that can be industry wise, you know, we have the rise of like social media, as well as a remote remote workforce today. And as we know, like past year and a half, HR looks completely different than it did just, you know, right before that. So talk to us about where you see the future of HR going. Um, that is a really good question. Um, because this, this entire year has been a tailspin um, for everybody, not, not even just HR, but just thinking about the changing of um, our, our changing our dynamics and, and looking at what is it going to look like next year. So uh, of course, when we first all started into this pandemic, um, all of a sudden, like nobody does face-to-face -face interviews. Um, I can't tell you like, cause I actually ended up having to change jobs in the middle of the pandemic too. So, I mean, it was complete and total panic mode for me because I was working for a hospital at the time and it shut down and um, in the middle of a pandemic. So I was looking for a job and I'm saying, everyone, how do you do this? Um, because in, instead of doing the face-to-face -face interviews, you're doing Zoom calls, you're, uh, even your recruitment is changing. Um, we're finding out more and more positions don't need to be here or they maybe don't need to be full-time because people have been doing them remotely um, to try and limit exposure. So, I mean, I, I do see um, HR changing in a lot of ways when it comes to the actual hiring process. I think a lot of it is going to be more on the technological side of things. Um, you're going to have more and more interviews that are recruit that are, are exactly this, where we're doing a Zoom meeting. I don't need you to come here or anything like that. Um, and then at the same time, uh, the whole recruitment side of things has changed drastically. So, I mean, we, we weigh a lot on Indeed um, for our applicant tracking and um, our flows that we get in through there. But even at that, like, 
getting through a job board and getting a response is very difficult. So, I mean, we're moving more and more towards platforms for like text messages uh, for candidates. So they put in their um, application, they'll get a text message and says, hey, can you give me a call so we can do a quick five minute phone interview um, or whatever we need to do. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that. I think we're going to see a lot more of uh, candidates not coming on site um, before their first day or their manager actually meeting them face to face. And um, personally, for, for people like me, that gives me like heart palpitations. But at the same time, um, everything has changed in this past year. And I don't see us regressing in, in back into other ways that were costing us money. Because um, that's essentially what this was doing. I mean, we would bring in, so for example, level positions, for instance, um, they could be from anywhere all over the United States. Um, I would fly somebody in here, they would be here for three nights, we would pay for their room, we would pay for their stay, um, all of their travel arrangements that's not gonna happen anymore. Um, it's, it's probably gonna move more towards a remote type of database and that's how we will run with things going forward. Very interesting. And then, you know, with the changes in the industry, we're all seeing new hurdles as well as there's always existing hurdles that will be commonplace within the HR field. Can you talk to us about some of these hurdles and how you overcome them? Um, sure. Uh, I will say, I think that one of the biggest hurdles that comes with being in HR, um, a, a lot of times is HR professionals and the people who work in HR, they get a bad rap. You know, um, anytime that somebody says, can you go to HR, everybody immediately panics and they think they're going to the principal's office. Um, so I think that is probably the number one hurdle that most people have um, getting into HR or staying in HR for that matter, just because you get a lot of pushback um, because HR, you are essentially the pinnacle for um, the policies and procedures there at your um, place of employment, and you're supposed to be there to enforce and oversee them. So a lot of times that can come with a bad rap, you know, um, but it's one of those things like you, you are there to help protect the employees, the company, um, your guests, and, and that's why you make the policies and procedures and make sure that people follow them. Um, so it is something that you really have to learn to have a little bit of a thick skin because if somebody says something to you or like if you're in the middle of a termination and um, obviously somebody's very upset because they just lost their job, you can't take things personally. Um, at the end of the day, this is your job and this is, this is what we are doing and uh, it's not easy by any stretch of the imagination, but at the same time, um, you find that network of people, you find that, that group of people that you mesh well with. In, in being in an HR community and it's um, and you have those similar situations that you can uh, really start to build the foundation of your relationship with. Um, but that's just it. Like, like I said, I mean, most of the time you're, you're not at the top of everybody's Christmas list when you work in HR. Um, but at the same time, you, you have to know that what you're doing is for the greater good. And, and, and it, it is for a really good purpose. And you're working for a safer and better workplace for your associates. So. Yeah, I think it's super important to just keep pushing to make sure that you have a seat at the table when it comes to like stakeholder meetings. So people don't say, okay, we'll leave HR out of this. It's, it's always have to be pushing to have that seat at the table. Absolutely. Because yeah. if when you're left out of a meeting, all of a sudden they've got, they, they've got this great big idea and they've got a party planned and you're sitting around, no, 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 no. We can't do this because of these four reasons, you know? Um, so it's, it's very important that, like you said, for, for HR to be there, um, re regardless of what is going on. And it's just because I think a lot of times the, the, the way that I choose to put it to my family is like, you're the devil's advocate, you know, you're, you're, you're sitting there and you're like, okay, but what about this? Did you think about this? Because this could be, a, a, this could happen because of this. We, we have that natural uh, cause and effect relationship. And um, we all have great ideas and, and we want to see the company succeed and we want to see a lot of things happen. But at the same time, um, HR is usually the wonderful voice of reason that's sitting there going, we really need to talk about it um, because we might run into a couple issues here. So um, it, 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 you're right. Absolutely. You, you always need to make sure that your presence is there. And for a lot of people watching this video, they're looking to 
become an HR business partner, or maybe it's an HR journalist, they're just looking to break into an HR position and they're not sure you know, which one's right for them. And some of the people are looking to take their first step into HR. So if you can talk about, you know, what are some signs that different HR positions may be right for you, as well as the HR field in general? Um, for, as for the field in general, um, there is, uh, I, I think that there's a lot of telltale signs that you're, you're going to be okay in HR and that everything's going to work out pretty well for you. Um, when, if, if you like, and, and I've made this joke with my family before and they think I'm joking, but I'm totally not. It's, it's one of those things like when you were a kid and you grew up and you always followed the rules because you were deathly afraid of what was going to happen because you didn't follow the rules. Um, Asia is probably going to work for you. You're probably going to love it because this is what we do. We make the policies and procedures. So um that is it's one of those things like it, it's probably going to work out for you and then um the other thing like working into hr it's it's one of those things that like we talked about entry-level positions are definitely key um if, if you're just getting into hr and you've never had an hr job before um, my biggest suggestion is to find like an hr coordinator position um, because they tend to be the gatekeepers for all HR offices. You get to see how everything moves in and out of the office, whether it be people for employee relations, whether it's new hires, onboarding benefits, you get a taste of everything. So you get to really start to see the inner workings of the positions and the company and what you're going to be doing. And it can really help mold you into saying, I really like this aspect of HR. This is what I want to learn more of, or this is what I want to do. Um, now, of course, like getting into like benefits and FMLA and ADA accommodations, that is, um, that, that really, I, I choose, I, I tell people all the time, the, the people who do that, like they bless their hearts because, um, it is so very meticulous and it is, um, something that you have to stay on top of all the time, um, because laws change all the time. There are new acts that are passed. There is a lot of information that can swirl around all the times. And there are provisions that are made in some situations that you're not aware of. Um, so you really have to have somebody who is very thirsty for knowledge and continuing that education and learning more and, and constantly seeking, um, advice and, and new platforms essentially um of course talent acquisitions I, I think is absolutely phenomenal for anybody coming straight out of college because you learn a lot about the hiring process um what your managers are looking for and it helps you build those relationships with your um the people that you're working with whether it be managers or um just the employees coming in or, or what have you um you really get to learn a lot about the business and the people who work in the business so if you're a very personable person um talent acquisitions recruitment all the way and betsy i just want to thank you for taking the time today to do this interview. Now, if students want to go ahead and connect with you on LinkedIn, can they do that? Yeah, absolutely. Please do. Cool. And if you're watching this video, the chances are that her LinkedIn URL is in the description below. So you can click that link and connect with her. Um, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you everybody for watching and excited for you guys to step into your career in the HR world and have continued success. Absolutely. Good luck to everybody.